Dear students, after studying this module, you shall be able to learn about the rationale of neurocognitive assessment, learn about the topographical organization of the brain, identify functions of different areas of the brain, learn about the various test batteries to measure neurocognitive functions, learn about independent tests developed to study brain and behavior relationships, evaluate the methods in terms of common errors committed while interpreting results. Neurocognitive examination, sometimes called neuropsychological testing or cognitive testing, is an examination of cognitive processes or an individual's ability to think and do concrete problem solving. It is used to measure the changes in thought as a result of neurological disease or trauma. The examination is conducted by a trained psychologist, psychiatrist, neuropsychologist or a clinician. Neurocognitive examination is carried out to point the location of brain dysfunction without having to use brain imaging procedures or other invasive techniques. By giving certain cognitive tasks to be performed by the patient, an assessment of his neurological condition can be made which can later be confirmed by other sophisticated techniques. The major functions as controlled by various areas of the brain are executive functions including verbal, numerical, abstract reasoning, decision making etc. The other higher order cognitive functions are learning, memory, acquiring and using language, attention and perception. The ability to operate in a three dimensional space that is operating in the visual spatial aspect and the motor coordination are also important for the neurocognitive examination. More specifically, neurocognitive tests measure abilities in areas such as receptive and expressive language, attention and concentration, memory, motor skills, sensory perceptual abilities, learning, memory, problem solving and decision making etc. The analysis of results reveals possible areas of brain where some dysfunction may exist. The main rationale behind neurological examination is that the brain is topographically organized for each small function performed by the organism. Failure to perform any task or test pinpoints an area of the brain that is dysfunctional. There are four major lobes of the brain, the frontal, temporal, parietal and the occipital lobe. The major functions controlled by these lobes are motor and executive, auditory, kinetic and tactile and visual respectively. Each lobe may be functionally divided into primary, secondary and associative areas. The primary areas are the main sensory processing centers. The secondary areas are related to perception of the stimuli. And the associative areas provide an integrated perception involving input coming from several sensory modalities. Major lobes of the brain and their functions are depicted in the following figure. The frontal lobes of the two hemispheres are the most important for controlling cognitive or executive functions and motor behavior. The prefrontal lobe is specialized for all kinds of reasoning tasks, decision making, long term planning and impulse control and personality characteristics. It is also involved in seriation of meaningful stimuli. The major pyramidal and extrapyramidal systems to control for motor behavior originate from the primary motor areas of the frontal cortex. Bilateral control of movements and sensory motor coordination is also achieved through the normal function of this lobe. 
One area called broker speech area is the control center for spoken language. Any damage to this area results in expressive aphasia or inability to express oneself through spoken word or language. The parietal lobe is involved with textual and kinesthetic sensations, perception of somatic sensations like hot, cold, warm, pressure, pain and touch are also mediated through this lobe. Spatial perception or the perception of the third dimension can be accomplished only through this area. It is involved in learning a second and a third language, reading, writing and in doing things in space such as dressing up, combing hair, etc. Occipital lobe is concerned with the visual sensation. Perception or recognition of complex patterns is done here. The sensory signals received from the eye are converted into nerve impulses and directed to this lobe where their recognition and perception takes place. They are also thus involved in reading, writing and several other learning and memory tasks. Temporal lobe is another important region where several functions are located. It is primarily concerned with the auditory sensation and perception. Integration of audition with other sensory modalities takes place in its association areas. It contains the Wernicke's comprehension area where comprehension of the spoken word takes place. Any damage to this part results in receptive aphasia. The temporal lobe also includes two important areas called amygdala and the hippocampus. They are the centers for emotionally laden long term and the current and short term memories respectively. The sensation of taste is also located in the deep layers of this lobe. In the center of the brain, touching all the four major lobes in a ring like appearance, there is a limbic lobe. It is the major controller of emotion. It includes pleasure areas of the brain as well as centers to react to severe stress. The post-traumatic stress disorder is also strongly felt in this region of the brain. Several tests have been constructed to incorporate functions typically performed by certain areas of the brain. The success or failure in doing the, these tests determines the extent of the brain damage. Neuropsychologists prefer to use test batteries rather than independent tests since they cover all major lobe functions. The two major batteries under use are described as hazard rated battery of tests. One of the most effective collections of tests in the context is hazard rated neuropsychological battery. It is meant to assess a variety of skills in adolescents and adults. It includes the following tests. The seashore rhythm test. The person is asked to compare two rhythms in terms of pitch, loudness, timbre and other characteristics. It measures sound recognition, attention and concentration and auditory perception. Speech sounds perception test. It measures attention and auditory visual integration or synthesis. The tape recordings of some non-sense syllables are given to the person and he has to select the written version of them. The speed and the errors committed in doing so are indicative of brain dysfunction. Tactual performance test, it measures kinesthetic and sensory motor abilities. The person has to place wooden blocks in the cut out spaces on a wooden board simply by touching. He is blindfolded. He performs the task with a dominant hand non-dominant hand and with both the hands. The speed is one of the criteria to judge performance in this test. Tactual performance test for memory. The person has to draw the shapes that he fitted into the board on a plain sheet of paper on the basis of his memory only. Thus, it is a test of incidental learning as well as attention and concentration. Category test. This is one of the most important and diagnostically efficient measures. It is a concept formation task 
where rules of classifying geometrical figures have to be deduced by the person. Abstract reasoning is required to do the test. Thus, functioning of the prefrontal cortex comes into the picture for possible diagnosis. Finger tapping test. It is a measure of the motor speed. The person is required to tap a telegraphic key as fast as possible in 10 seconds only. Eye-hand coordination which may be a symptom of many mental and physical disorders can be tested through this test. Grip strength test. The strength of grip separately by both the hands is tested. The person has to squeeze his hand as hard as possible using the instrument called dynamometer. Tactile form recognition test. The blindfolded person has to recognize the shapes placed on his palm of his hand. Thus, it is a test of his sensory perceptual ability. Aphasia screening test. Simple tasks include naming the objects shown in the picture, repeating short phrases, copying tasks, etc. The focus is on the receptive and expressive aspects of language. Sensory perceptual examination. The person has to respond to simple bilateral sensory tasks such as which finger has been touched, which ear has received a message. The sensory perceptual ability is the main focus of study in this task. Unitary as well as bilateral stimulation in all sensory modalities is given. The test gives hints about the dysfunction of one side of the brain that is in one hemisphere, if the person consistently makes errors by one side of the body. Considering the fact that the brain is contralaterally organized for function and also that all sensory experiences are topographically organized in the brain, one could infer a lesion in the left temporal lobe if the message into the right ear is not consistently and accurately processed by the person. Similarly, inability of a blindfolded person to recognize shapes of the wooden blocks by tracing his right finger on them may indicate dysfunction in the postcentral gyrus of the left parietal areas of the brain. Trail making test. In this test, the person has to join letters, numbers as guided in a complex picture. The speed is the main measure of response. The scanning capacity and mental flexibility can be tested through this test. Besides these tests, some other supplementary tests have also been recommended. The Weschler's Test of Intelligence, the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory 2, Weschler Memory Scale and Re-Auditory Verbal Learning Test have been found to be very useful for the purpose. Finger localization tests have been developed by Benton to study the sensory input of the person. Three sets of trials are taken with each of the hands separately where the blindfolded person has to tell which finger has been touched by the tester. In one set, the hand is visible. In the second set, the hand is not visible to the participant. And in the third set, two fingers at a time are touched by the tester. Another well-known and widely used collection of tests is the Luria Nebraska Test Battery. Luria Nebraska Test Battery, the battery consists of 269 items which are divided into 11 clinical scales. The scales include measures of motor behavior comprehension, of rhythm, identification of tactile, visual and auditory stimuli, receptive and expressive speech, reading, writing and arithmetic, memory and intelligence. The battery is designed to throw light on the pathology separately of the left hemisphere, the right hemisphere and the total brain. Besides the test batteries, some independent tests have been developed to measure significant aspects of neurocognitive functioning. A few examples are tests based on attention and concentration, 
Attention and concentration are an extremely sensitive measure to study mental status and neurocognitive functioning of an individual. They consist of the ability to filter out irrelevant information that is selective attention, shift attention flexibly, mental tracking of target and maintaining vigilance. Robertson et al. 1996 have developed a test of everyday attention also known as T which measures several subcomponents of attention. It is applicable for a wide age range of 18 to 80 years. The normative data is available for Alzheimer's, closed head injury and stroke patients as well as for normal population. Subtests of T include the following. Map search is a test in which 80 symbols have to be searched in a short time. So it is a test of selective attention. Elevator counting is a test of sustained attention and elevator counting with distractions is a test of divided attention. Auditory elevator counting with the help of tape recorded sounds. Auditory elevator counting with distraction. Visual elevator counting with reversal. Auditory elevator counting with reversals have become very popular to measure attention and concentration processes. Telephone search where in a classified directory the names as well as a few symbols have to be searched is a test of divided attention by the participants is another example in this area. Lottery test requires the participant to listen to winning numbers and to recall numbers with some specifications that is full number of the series which ended with 66 etc. Continuous performance test based on the logic of the signal detection tests is widely used in the neurocognitive examination. The person has to press a telegraphic key as and when a given target, a letter, a digit or a letter appearing with another letter appears in the series. They have been found to have good diagnostic value in conditions of attentional deficit and hyperactivity disorder, drug effects, schizophrenia and other brain impairment conditions. A large variety of such tests has appeared. Visual and auditory tasks have been devised. They have been used to diagnose learning difficulties, reading disorders and emotional problems as affected by dysfunction in the brain. Auditory serial addition and serial subtraction tasks have been devised for the diagnosis of brain function via study of sustained attention. In such tasks, either the number have to be added in a series that is first with second, second with the third, presented and so on or they have to be serially subtracted. Serial subtraction is similar to the task recommended in the mini mental status examination where beginning with 100, 7 are to be subtracted from each resulting number. Other tests to measure various aspects of attention processes are digit span and coding or substitu substitution test in Weschler's intelligence scales. Smith 1973 devised symbol digit modalities test on the lines of the Weschler's coding test. In this test, numbers are printed on the page and the examinee either has to write its code underneath it or to speak it out. If the examinee speaks them out correctly but fails in writing them, a motor output dysfunction may be inferred. Tests based on learning and memory. Learning and memory are higher order functions. Their location on various brain areas has been widely studied. Verbal learning is primarily lateralized in the left hemisphere frontal cortex where pictorial memory is controlled by areas in the right hemisphere. Short term memory is localized in the hippocampus whereas long-term memory is located in amygdala and some other areas of the brain. So learning and memory tasks have high diagnostic value. Weschler's memory scale consists of tests like verbal paired associates, logical memory, letter number sequencing, spatial span etc. It has been reported that the patients of Alzheimer's disease and traumatic brain injuries scored much poorer compared to normal showing high diagnostic value. 
The test has been found useful in testing memory loss in closed head injury patients, schizophrenia and alcoholism. For clinical research into memory, a Ray Auditory Verbal Learning Test has been consistently used. The special feature is to test memory as a function of distracting stimuli. A recall as well as recognition score is obtained. The norms are available for very old population also making it useful for the cases of dementia besides other conditions of memory dysfunction related to brain abnormal function. Full object memory evaluation is another test for the elderly population. It has been used to confirm the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. The special features of the test are selective reminding of the omitted items introduction of distracted tasks in between, delayed recall and a multiple choice recognition test. The test is very useful in detecting dementia in its early stages. Norms have been provided for nursing home residents in their 70s and 80s. Another major area for assessment of neurocognitive functioning is the language. It provides insight into the functioning of left hemisphere. The functions related to la language are reading, writing, speaking and comprehending the spoken words. Any loss in these functions due to the brain damage is called aphasia. Some of the distinctive signs of aphasia that may occur in spontaneous speaking may be inability to find right words, may use neurologism, repetition of sentences and phrases, failure to comprehend simple instructions, reading text, writing if not otherwise neurologically handicapped and doing simple calculations. Several standardized aphasia screening tests have also been developed. Some of the examples include the multilingual aphasia examination by Benton, Hampshire, Ree and Sivan, 1994, Western aphasia battery by Curtis, 1979, Boston Aphasia Diagnostic Examination by Good Glass, Kaplan and Berisi, 2000, Poach Index of Communicative Ability by Poach, 1983, and Token Test by Spreen and Strauss, 1998. Test based on spatial perception. Drawing tests such as the Penta Visual Motor Gestalt test have been used to diagnose the visual spatial and manipulatory or constructional abilities. Inability to perform such tasks is called idiomotor apraxia. The Penta Visual Gestalt test consists of 9 stimulus figures and the examinee has to copy them on a plain sheet of paper one by one. It is scored not for its artistic ability but for precision of copying as fast as possible. Norms have been developed to identify brain damage on the qualitative analysis of the figures drawn by the examinee. Another simple drawing test is the Greek cross. Here the examinee has to simply draw the periphery of the figure without lifting his pencil. Qualitative analysis of the data is done, the test validity is very high. The assembly tests that requires construction in a three dimensional setup are also very helpful in pinpointing aberrations in the brain functioning. In this series of three models of the blocks, the examinee is presented with one block at a time and he is required to construct replica of the model by choosing appropriate blocks from a number of them presented to him in a tray. The scoring depends on omissions, displacements, additions and substitution. The test is very sensitive to brain impairment, particularly in the parietal lobes of the brain. The tactual performance test that has been included in the Halstead Reaton battery is also an important and sensitive measure to detect brain damage. Tests to measure executive functions. Executive dysfunction is a term for the range of cognitive, emotional and behavioral difficulties which often occur after injury to the frontal lobes of the brain. Impairment of executive functions is common 
after acquired brain injury and has a profound effect on many aspects of everyday life. Executive functioning is an umbrella term for many abilities like planning and organization, flexible thinking, monitoring performance, multitasking, solving unusual problems, self-awareness, learning rules, social behavior, making decisions, motivation, initiating appropriate behavior, inhibiting inappropriate behavior, controlling emotions, concentrating and taking in information. Executive functions or the higher order cognitive functions are located in the prefrontal cortex. They include logical analysis, abstract, verbal, numerical and other reasoning, planning, decision making and flexibility of thinking. It encompasses a very broad area, Porch's mazes, Wisconsin card sorting test and Tinkutery test that have been utilized for the purpose. In Porch's maze test, the examinee has to trace the correct path by avoiding blind ends without lifting his pencil. The Wisconsin card setting, sorting test is developed on the theme of concept formation. The examinee has to arrange the large number of cards into different piles according to various criteria like size, color, etc. Thus, abstract thinking and mental set shifts are measured in this test. In the Tinkutery test, 50 pieces of a Tinkutery set are placed on a clean surface and the examinee has to make whatever he wants to with those blocks. The scoring depends on the number of pieces used mobility of construction, symmetry, naming of the construction, etc. The result successfully points towards closed head injury, Alzheimer's disease and other conditions of the brain damage. Gregory also mentioned a promising test called behavioral assembly of Dyer's executive system. It includes problems encountered in real life situations like finding way through a map, stimulated search for a key, etc. Besides six tests of this kind, the battery also includes a behavioral checklist where responses are marked on a five-point Likert scale. The questions in this checklist refer to future planning and decision-making abilities. One of the most standard way of, to capture brain abnormality is to administer the mental status examination or its shorter version called the mini mental status examination. The MMSC consists of only 30 items for which a score of 30 may be obtained on ideal conditions. The items relate orientation for time, person and place, immediate or short term memory, attention and calculation, delayed recall, naming of objects, reading, writing and comprehension and drawing. The test has proven to be of utmost value in clinical and psychiatric settings. Some measures to assess neurocognitive functions have been developed in the Indian context also. Such efforts have been made by the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, NIMHANS, in Bangalore. They have developed NIMHANS Neuropsychological Battery for Children and NIMHANS Index of Specific Learning Disabilities, as reported in Krishna at all. The former is standardized on Indian children aged 5 to 15 years and is meant to tap functions of the frontal, temporal and parietal lobes. The latter assesses domains of reading, writing, arithmetic and spelling and is standardized on children studying in standards from 1 to the 7. Two major errors, while analyzing data on the neurocognitive examination, two kinds of errors may be committed. They are false negative and false positive. The results may indicate that there is no malfunction of the brain falsely, that is the actual damage may not be detected. This is called the error or false negative. The error of false positive occurs when a dysfunction of the brain is concluded on the basis of the analysis of data when actually there is no problem with the brain. Both these errors are of serious nature and require cross validation. When is referral for neurocognitive examination needed? Referrals are typically made to diagnose or rule out dysfunction of the brain. 
This information also helps to describe the identified condition's impact on the patient's daily functioning. Examples include traumatic brain injury, epilepsy, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, brain tumor, stroke, Alzheimer's disease and other types of dementia. The analysis of results of the test goes to the doctor and he uses this information to make decisions regarding treatment. These tests are also useful for the follow-up studies of the patients after treatment. Comparison of baseline results and follow-up results is carried out. Neurocognitive testing is beneficial in tracking progress for patients undergoing rehabilitation programs. It can also help in planning educational and vocational programs for them. The tests can also assist in disability determination or for forensic uses. When should one think about having neurocognitive evaluation? What are the major symptoms of brain damage? Difficulties that might indicate that the need for an evaluation include memory loss, especially of recent events, difficulty communicating with others, difficulty in attention and concentration, difficulty planning and decision making, changes in spatial skills or visual perception, difficulty reading or writing, delirium, lack of impulse control. Summary, brain is topographically organized for all functions. Failure to perform certain tests or tasks hints at damage in corresponding areas of the brain that control those functions. Important areas tested through the neurocognitive examination are learning and memory, language, attention and perception, executive or higher order cognitive functions, visual spatial perception and motor behavior. Test batteries like Halstead Rayton battery and Luria Nebraska neuropsychological inventory have been developed to cover wide spectrum of functions. Several tests specifically designed for a function such as aphasia test, test of everyday attention, etc. are also widely used. Tests have high validity and pinpoint areas of brain dysfunction with great accuracy. Thank you.